clear. Metal Gear Solid, released in 1998, known as one of the greatest games ever made for the PlayStation 1. In 1997, it was revealed at E3 as a short video, which got everyone hyped for this amazing game. In 1998, they had a playable demo at the Tokyo Game Show, which made everyone want to buy it. It changed the way we look at video games. It basically popularized the stealth gaming genre and was the influence for Splinter Cell. I remember playing it on a demo disc I had and I must have replayed the intro 30 times before getting a full copy of the game. It was simply amazing. The game was so popular that they released an expanded version in Japan for the PlayStation 1 and PC called Metal Gear Solid Integral, but outside of Japan it was only on PC. It added some features that were present on the American release such as difficulty change and they added the English voice actors to the Japanese release. It had the VR training missions included, which would later be re-released in America known as Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. There's a bit more changes made, but we won't get into it, but you can see them all here. The PC is the only version to add boxers to the naked man. I personally prefer the blur. It makes it more funny to me. Also, nothing was assigned to crouch and to move right was shift, while up, down, left were all arrow keys. I'm sure this was probably just an installation error. There's also a Bleemcast version that was made for the Sega Dreamcast and released in early 2000s. It is a high resolution of the original Metal Gear Solid with enhanced graphics and requires that the player owns both Bleemcast disc and the original game for the PlayStation. It's a good version of the game, but I still don't recommend it over the original PlayStation copy. There is also a complete remake of this game called Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, only for the Nintendo GameCube. Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, only for Nintendo GameCube. It was released in 2004 and was created by Silicon Knights. This was a fantastic game, but there's plenty out there who dislike it because of the over-the-top cutscenes. Also, since they introduced first person shooting in Twin Snakes, this scene when you're plowing down the guards is a tad harder, mainly due to the fact I didn't know I could shoot in first person at the time. Back to the original Metal Gear Solid, Hideo Kojima, the creator of the series, originally planned for this to be Metal Gear 3 in 1994 for the 3DO console. Kojima later decided to rename the game Metal Gear Solid because the other two games weren't well known at the time. Development began in mid-1995 with the intention of creating the best PlayStation game ever, and I must say, I really do think they did it. According to Yuji Shinkawa, who knows if I'm pronouncing that right, sorry, Solid Snake's physique in this particular installment was based on Jean-Claude Van Damme, while his facial appearance was based on Christopher Walken. The designers would sometimes use Lego pieces to put the levels together. Pretty cool. What I did here was play my original Metal Gear Solid disc on my PlayStation 1 using composite cables, and that's running at 480i. And then I put the disc in my PlayStation 2 using component running at 480p. On the PlayStation 3, I'm running it on my HDMI running at 1080p upscaled. Then I downloaded the digital copy from the PlayStation Store, and that is also on my HDMI upscaled to 1080p. Let's go back and compare a few shots. In this first headshot of Snake, we see some differences. On the PS2, you get some real nice sharpness, but with too many dots everywhere. And it's a little dark. The digital download has the same sharpness and dot issue, while the Metal Gear Solid disc on the PlayStation 3 has the same dots in the background, the character is sharp, but looks smooth at the same time. In these shots, they all look great, even the PlayStation on 480i. But again, the disc on PS3 looks best because the character is sharp and smooth. It just looks great. In the last example here, Liquid's hair is smooth and the guard doesn't look like he's full of noise like these two are. Now let's add the Bleemcast to the mix. I have no idea what is happening here. The cutscene is a little different on the original PlayStation, but I used the same exact disc on the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. So this really confuses me. I literally haven't a clue how this happened. It's really interesting though. Well, let's add the PC to the mix. Take a look here. The angle is different on the PlayStation 1. On a side note, the PC edition is awesome. Clearly looks the best, but the PS3 on disc is a close second. 
The Bleem cast is so damn dark though. Let's bring in Twin Snakes now. They added a lot more detail into the graphics, and you can really see what these characters look like, which is really cool. Twin Snakes basically is a carbon copy with some enhancements and a few changes. I personally love the remake and wish they added it to the HD collections. Okay, let's move away from Twin Snakes and just compare the base game on PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, and Windows. The Bloomcast version is just so dark compared to the other two, it doesn't look that good. Let's watch his hand get chopped off. Ugh. Then look how dark it is here. But here, I think the Bloomcast looks better. Not too dark and some nice detail. Well guys, I don't really have much else to say. My time is limited these days. So this is all I really have for you. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next episode, which I hope will be a lot sooner than this one was. Take it easy.